Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show, joined as usual by myself, Ben, and my colleague Lauren. Um, Hello. A few things have changed uh, yes. this episode uh, in, in a lot of ways, um, but before we do that, uh, if you haven't already done so, then make sure you subscribe to our channel via YouTube, um, your favourite podcast app, if you just want to listen to us on audio, and you can join in on the conversation at the Snowy's Camping Show uh, Facebook group, which is uh, not called that anymore. It's called Snowy's Camping Banter because we want everyone to be involved, not just the listeners of the show. Now, today's episode, we'll get into shortly, but um, we'll just talk about, would you, you wouldn't call it the elephant in the room, would elephant you? Elephant in but, the room. I mean, maybe we should have just <clears throat> gone on and not even said anything. <laughs> and just go, what? What are you talking about? New studio? Yeah, I don't know. We no. mean, it's always been there. Um, yeah, so we our, our team moved offices uh, mm. and hence we had to move studio as Moved's well. So, um, and we've gone to fortnightly um, at, at the moment, fortnightly yep. episodes at the moment. So we spent the last two weeks frantically uh, trying to set up the studio here in a much smaller space. Very small um, space. Fitting a lot in a small space here and setting up. If you up. could see what's outside of your what you're seeing on the camera, you'd probably have a chuckle. Yeah, there's trip hazards everywhere. <laughs> yes, um, for those obviously listening on YouTube. Yeah, but we've been scouring uh, for all sorts of random Bits and pieces. gear and pieces. I came from my shed and old climbing stuff and we asked our warehouse team what they've got lying around that they don't want to use anymore that's all gone on the shelf. I'm so. pretty um, excited to, if you, you're you not familiar with the uh, Facebook group, someone recently did their own little Photoshop job and turned you into a Star Trek character, which was amazing. And I'm going to get that printed and it's put cool. in a frame for the back for the background oh, here because yeah, right I think eh? that – that That's would be amazing. Apparently called data. I yeah. didn't get the job. I'm not a Trekkie fan, but it's okay. Ben. We might have mentioned that in a previous episode, so apologies if you're hearing that again. But yes, I yeah. just want to have it physically in the background for everyone to appreciate the magnitude of its brilliance. <laughs> so it's on the Facebook group if you want to check it out. We're going to get used to a different seating position here we too. Because I'm facing you. Yes. Now, um, I will just also- mention that we have had plenty of comments about the waffle at the start of these shows, and just please just get into the topic. We're clearly. Um, not, not to, doing so to well. Any that. guidelines there. But talking about the actual Facebook group, the topic today is inspired by a couple of posts that we've had in there recently, um, with people wanting to know more about sleeping bags and what the best sleeping bag um, to go with is for their trips and, and mm. camping and things like that. We did do early on in the piece, if you've been with us for a really long time, um, episode 11, we interviewed Dean from Cedar Summit uh, on sleep systems. And that was a really great episode, but it was a really long time ago. And whilst the information was pretty general and can be sort of applied across the board, it was a bit technical. Um, and so yeah. I think potentially uh, you you either might have missed that episode or sort of skipped over it with the assumption that it is a bit technical because it is more sort of geared towards um, lightweight hiking, full on sleep systems. Um, we touched on testing sort of, all the EN testing for sleeping bags and that sort of thing. Yeah, but we we're did not, as well. We're gonna. I don't think we're going to get that technical in this episode. Are we? No, we're, we're be not. A bit more general camping. Correct. Focused, yep, at, general aff- camping, as car well. camping, affordable. Yeah. Yep. Um, and we also sort of talked a little bit at at the beginning of this season as well, our like basic series where we're sort of getting back to basics, wanting to do some podcast content around people who are potentially quite new to camping, um, giving a bit more of an idea of how to go about all those different elements. And so sleeping bags is obviously Mm. a big one of those because I don't know about you, but I've heard so many stories about people who've gone camping and just had the worst time because they were just cold. Yep. sleeping cold or not comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I know before I started working in this industry, I got bitten by uh, a lack of solid knowledge around my sleeping bag choice. Yep, for temperature um, in particular. You're referring for to. temperature in, in particular, it was a zero degree comfort bag and I was only in three degree temperature and I just expected mm. that that would keep keep me covered. And it most certainly didn't. Well, let's go back to episode 11 a long time ago, but I do vaguely remember you mentioning that on that episode. But yeah. if, if you do want to learn a little bit more about the EN standards for testing of bags, yeah. um, jump on to episode 11 and have a listen there because not all bags are tested to this standard. Um, and if you're not sure about a bag's temperature rating, then it's definitely worth questioning it, digging further into 
uh, how they've come to that uh, temperature rating. Yeah, correct. Yep. Um, so, so, yeah, just also in episode 91 we did not too long ago was on sleeping mats as well and oh, there's okay, a yep. little bit of a relevance as we'll sort of touch on um, when you're looking at a sleeping bag. It's not just the sleeping bag in and of itself that you're looking at. You've sort of got to look at um, your sleeping mat as yep. well. Um, but anyway, let's in get into it. That, Good sleeping bag on an airbed on a cold night, it's still going to be cold. Yeah, but correct. Yeah. That's as detailed as we'll get on this one. Jump yeah, on yeah. episode 91 <laughs> and understand why the, the sleeping mat is an awesome part of your sleep system. Mm-hmm. So considerations for the general bags. And when we talk general bags, we're probably – the the episode 11 we talked about bags that are probably two $300 plus, the technical sort of bags from the yeah. Cedar Summit range. Um, and you, you, you get value for money out of that, but they do cost a lot. Not everyone needs that, but you can get a good bag for sort of 50 to between fifty and maybe one hundred fifty dollars for general camping, yeah, and it's probably all most people need. Um, but what when you pay less, it's usually bulkier, um, yeah. So it's made with materials that aren't, aren't made to be packed really small, yeah. Um, but that's not as much of a consideration when you're just car camping, right? Correct, yeah. And I mean, like it, realistically, unless there's six or seven of you in your family, like, well, potentially even, no, I think if it's, if there's just up to four of you, you're probably okay with pretty much any sleeping bag. But if there's more than four of you and your vehicle and your pack size and weight, maybe you're not towing a trailer or a camp trailer, if that's a consideration, maybe. But for the most part with general car camping, the weight and pack size is the least of your concerns. Yep. You just want to make sure it's going to be durable and warm enough realistically. Yeah. Um, so the things that you're going to be looking at is um, or the main one that comes up is zip configuration, whether or not um, the zips on the left side or the right side, whether or not you can open up the foot section completely on its own, whether or not you can open the whole bag up like a blanket, um, There, you know, whether or not you can zip it from the bottom up as well as the top down, like mm-hmm. just zip, zips are probably one of the biggest questions we get on sleeping bags from yeah. customers when people are trying to decide um, so the, what, the what simple, bag's best for them. The simple ones, and when I say simple, they're simple by design, but yep. um, if I use um, examples like the um, Coleman's Pilbara range or mm-hmm. their Mudgee range, I believe the Pilbara has a single zip. I'm, I can't think off the top of my head, but a lot of them have one zip that runs down the side and it continues right around the foot section. Yeah. So you can't just unzip the feet if you want to let air in through the bottom there. Um, and zipping two bags together means you've got to do them like one on top, one on the bottom instead of side to side. Yeah. But it's still, like the Pilbara in particular is made with really warm, fluffy, warm, um, yeah. uh, sorry, thick material. Yeah. And it keeps you really warm, but you're not paying the earth for it. Correct. Um, but if I reckon if I had four of those, it'd be it'd be a fair chunk of space mm. in my four drive. Because mm. they're what, thirty odd centimeters diameter by forty, forty five in length. Like they can yeah. some of those can get pretty bulky. So yeah. if you're buying online, it's a bit hard to um to tell, I suppose, but just maybe just have a look at the dimensions. If you've got two kids, you could get away with much smaller options. Yeah. Maybe adults, yeah, get a nice warm Pilbara bag or, yeah. or one of the 230 um, uh, Alaska Blacks or the um, Dutch, you do a um, cold mountain range. Yeah. Really warm bags, really roomy bags, really bulky. If you've got four of them, it's going to be a fair bit of space in your boot. Um, yeah. More than four, yeah, like you said, it's probably too much. So probably two for the adults and then you can probably get away with some more compact options for the kids. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, so other sort of considerations are your overall use. Like you can get a, you'd mentioned the Darchi, um, cold mountain bags and the Alaska 23 zeros, for example, they come in like a 900 wide and an 1100 wide and a 1400 wide and a couple of different sizes. Mm. So just consider what width of your sleeping bag you want. Most of the car camping style, um, sleeping bags, you know, Coleman, Oztent, Oztrail, Dutchie, all of that, they roughly sit between the 90 centimetre to 100 mm-hmm. centimetre mark. Um, there's a lot of variation in materials as well. You can get some that are just like a soft cotton, like a poly cotton, almost like a bed sheet or something like nice and smooth on the outside or a doona cover. Then yep. you can get ones that have got that more heavy duty um 
canvas on the outside yeah, yeah or like a sometimes i think they call it duck as well if you know anything about materials it's just like a more it's not quite a canvas but it's a much heavier duty option like they might use for curtains or couch oh, covers upholstery soft like or, soft yeah, yeah. still soft and cottony but just a bit thicker um and more durable and not 100 percent canvas um and then you can get, you know, well, I don't know what it's called, the 80s tracksuit pant material, you know, like that shiny, oh, synthetic, I don't know what it's called. It's just a, just a polyester called. or a nylon outer, yeah. which has got that it's a set of material that when you're crawling it's got that cold feel against your skin initially th- and then it warms up. And I think they're sort of on the way out. Like we don't have a huge amount of those in our range anymore. I know like the Darchy Cold Mountain ones, they have a version that has that on the outside. And then as fleece. And then they have like a flannelette on the inside. Yep. Um, but apart from that, there's not a huge amount. Like most brands have gone towards that soft poly cotton sort of sheet mm. feel on the outside as well as the inside yep. and more that canvassy finish. And a lot of people talking about materials, I reckon another really common question that we get through for the sleeping bags is, well, do I go with a particularly – Cold, the cold mountain sleeping bags as an example what's the benefit between the standard cold mountain and the canvas cold mountain yeah and I was it's going like, to raise that in this episode yeah what because would be your response to that I think that for the most part the the difference is more around your aesthetic mm-hmm I think it adds a bit of a weight to the sleeping bag. So if you're a person like for me personally, I sleep a lot better if I'm, I've got something heavy Mm -hmm. or or heavier on me. So there's a, and I think that also contributes to that feeling of being snugly and warm, even Mm -hmm. if the temperature rating of the bag isn't that different. And I, they're not EN tested, but I, I, think just purely from a common sense perspective, it would have to add a little bit of insulative value a little bit old, think, yeah, because you're you're going from a polyester fabric that's, I don't know how thick it would be, but yeah. I would say the canvas material is at least three to four times thicker. Yeah. So that's going to add some insulative value. Yeah. In, in trapping the the um the warm air inside the bag anyway. And I'd probably also say from a durability perspective, it's going to last a lot longer. So if you're someone who's potentially um, using your sleeping bag in a swag or on a stretcher if you're in open air or whatever, it's probably going to be a better option for you because it does add that extra level of durability. Yep. Um, it is a lot bulkier. If you roll, st- yeah. if, if you wanted a bag to it roll up heavier. in a swag, um, it's probably a good option, but it's going to make that swag roll a lot bigger. Yeah. And if you've got a double and you put a double one of those bags in there, it's going to make it a lot bulkier. So that might be a consideration to go that um, if we're talking about Cold Mountain yeah. um, to go for their non-canvas version if you want to reduce bulk. Yeah, it's in a swag. It's protected by the outer of the swag anyway. Yeah, that's true. I have seen a lot of. um, I don't know how. I don't know how realistic it is, and maybe like people who are listening can tell us this. But I have seen a lot of uh, like content photos, imagery around camping, full driving, and things of people being wrapped up in their sleeping bag, sitting at a campsite, for example. and I've never done that because I just like to keep my bedding where my bedding belongs yeah. because I don't want to get any grit or dirt or anything. Yep. Um, but if that's something that people actually do do in real life, that that's also another consideration. Well, of, I don't think I'd want to be durability yeah, factor. and sitting around a campfire with a synthetic polyester outer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Is probably not as smart an idea as as a canvas outer, which will still maybe. If you get a, an a, a, um, ember or something on it, it's probably still going to burn a hole, yeah, but yeah. not nearly as bad as a, as a near synthetic as bad, outer. Yeah, that synthetic material too. That is like when we talk polyester or nylon out as that synthetic shiny material is usually kind of the the cheaper version of the fabric. But the yeah. high end bags are made of the same thing, but it's just a much better quality version of that fabric. Correct. Yeah, and a lot of them nowadays have got this really, so, even though it's a, a polyester, it's, it's got like this a really matte, soft feel, and it's matte like yeah. a matte finish. And yeah, yeah, so it's come a long way. It but, has. And I guess that's what you pay for when you jump up to the bags that we talked about in was it episode eleven. Yeah. Is the quality of those materials? They still feel nice, but they pack up smaller. But yeah. With these bags here, um, yeah, if you want that nice fluffy feel on the outside or that that not cold sort of feel, go for a canvas bag. Um, otherwise, most of them have got um, – if, if the outside doesn't bother you, most of them have got like a poly cotton or in particular a fleece liner on the like inside anyway, it, yeah. which feels nice and cosy. Yeah, and you just mentioned the fleece liner. Some sleeping bags do include a zipped-in 
um, liner with them, which like Coleman, for example, I uh, – the I think pil- it the is pil- the Pilbara. They the- do a Pilbara zero and a Pilbara five, the and literally five, the o- minus five. And literally the only difference is the minus five has the fleece liner. Yeah. So based on that information, Coleman are claiming, and I'm just going to say Coleman are claiming because it's not an EN tested bag, which means it's not sort of standardised with with um, temperature testing for us to be able to say it does. Mm. Um, but Coleman are sort of essentially claiming that their fleece liner which is the same as the one that you can buy separately, mind you, is going to provide an, an additional five degrees of warmth. But like Oztent Rivergum, for example, that's another sleeping bag that comes with a built-in liner. I think there's a couple of the new Oztrail sleeping bags um, that have dropped earlier this year. They also have a fleece liner in it. Essentially what that does is it provides you with buying one single bag that has a removable liner, which A, helps with the longevity of your bag because it's not getting trashed and dirty. But B, you also have a bit more flexibility in Mm. the sense that in summer or in slightly warmer weather, you can take the liner out. You can also potentially use the liner in and of itself alone as like a Mm -hmm. very lightweight summer bag. Um, You can you know, open up your sleeping. It's just it gives you a lot more versatility without having to purchase an additional liner item. Almost gives you three temperature ranges in one when yeah. you put a sleeping liner in there. That's not to say um, you can't add a liner to another bag. It's of just course. that these liners zip in, so you don't. If it's a if it's a separate liner, sometimes they kind of twist a little bit inside the bag. Yeah. But the ones that are integrated don't twist around your feet and stuff. So, having said that, I know we're probably lots of different information and brands and things like that in this conversation. But having said that, I know talking about the Coleman sleeping bags and the Coleman fleece liner pretty sure most of their sleeping bags that they've made that don't come with a liner have the um, ability for the liner to be zipped in and installed in their bags properly. Okay. Right. So that's something to, to sort of that. bear in mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, now I mentioned it before, but um, zip configurations and, and how they join together. Um, the main thing here that people should be aware of is, is the hood yes. on the bags. Now yeah. if you've got a – Sleeping bag, um, take a step back to episode 11 again. Um, all the Cedar Summit bags have got, uh, they're all part of what they call their zip coupling system mm. from memory. That's what it's called. Yeah, zi- yeah, so there's is. two bags. There's a zip that runs down the side and a separate zip that runs around the foot. Now you use that side zip to, do- to join another bag of a similar series to that bag so they sit side by side. So two bags sitting side by side means the hood sits flat on the ground, you lie on top of the hood and then the top sits where it normally would sit. Yeah. With a, a bag like um, the the one that comes to mind is the common mudgy, which is really nice, soft feeling all, all round bag. They've got a small kind of, it's not really a hood, it's more mm. of just sort of something something to rest your, your head and sort of tucks around your neck if you want yeah. to tighten it up. But they've got one zip that runs down the side and along the bottom, so one continuous yeah. zip. So to join them together, as I mentioned previously, you – and I've done like a video fully on open this. Them yeah, up you and open it, them, don't open you? it right up. Yep, and mm-hmm. you put another one on top. That means that the bottom one has got because you've opened it flat. You've got the hood on one side and not on the other. But then the top one, you've got the Some, hood on one someone side essentially has a hood on Someone's their face. Got a hood on their face. Yeah. yeah. So zipping two bags with a single zip together isn't ideal. Yeah. Doable, but not not ideal. But then it's not the end of the world either. You've got a little bit of extra fabric that you just kind of tuck around your neck and it keeps you warm. So Yeah, and if that is something that you want to do, I mean a lot of people like that option because it means that the zips remain on the three edges of the sleeping bag instead of having a zip down the middle between two people. Yeah. So if that is something that's important to you, then looking at, for example, again with the Coleman's, the Pilbara bags that we've mentioned already, they don't have don't a hood have a, at all. Yeah. And so you can easily zip two together to mm-hmm. create like a big – um, non hood interfering yeah. type. But the bigger bags, like the Alaska Blacks and the Cold Mountains, they've got a big hood. Yeah. So someone's going to have a, a big hood a big on hood the top the layer of their sleeping bag. Mind you, though, I know uh, yeah. not the Alaskas off the top of my head, but the Cold Mountains, Cold Mountains are dual zips, which mean they have a zip down either side. So you actually zip those but- buttered together. So yes, the hoods on the right. on the ground, both okay. hoods stay on the ground. Long story short. If you want to join, two if bags, you want to join them together, just make sure you pay attention to the zip configuration. We have all this information on our website. And while Usually, I mention yeah. information on our website, I'll also mention that something we would have mentioned in episode 11 
um, with relation to temperature ratings, um, if something has been EN tested, as we mentioned before, that yeah. that rating is usually the same as what we've introduced on our website, being the Snowy's recommended rating. Yeah, um, because it's been standard. It's 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 been tested. Sorry, and it's um kind of on the same like a level playing field. The bags that haven't been tested, um, there are many that the su- um, supplier um, ratings are pretty good. Um, some of Coleman's are good, some are a bit bit out. Um, mm. But we've put the Snowy's recommended rating on all of our bags. Yeah. I hope it's on all of our bags. We, we, it's on, we, I'm pretty sure it's on all of them. We invest to put it on all of them. Some new ones we can't um, because – it's based on consumer feedback sometimes. Yeah, I, plus think, how it feels. I think it's sort of based on the real life touch and feel of the bag. And mm. obviously our experience having sold sleeping bags for a really long time, yep. um, having an idea of performance and also consumer feedback. Yep. Um, generally that puts us in a position to be able to go, okay, well, this brand is advertising this bag as say a minus 10, for mm-hmm. example, but we don't necessarily think that that's a hundred percent accurate and we don't want to give you guys a bum steer. So we might go, Oh, we think it's going to be more of a minus five. Yeah. And I mean, again, like we've already covered in, in a previous episode, but comfort temperature rating is so ambiguous. Mm. There's so many different elements that go into how a sleeping bag will keep you warm or whether or not a sleeping bag will keep you warm. So even an EN tested bag, you can sleep in and I can sleep in and we could be next to each other in a tent mm-hmm. on exactly the same sleeping mat and have almost every single variable be the same yep. and you can be warm and I can be cold. Yep. So there is there is a lot of vari- variables um, that come into play, at least of all your own, mm. you know, biochemistry as, a, yeah. as an individual person. So... But again, if you're buying a minus 10 bag, I think that comes with an expectation that you will be for the most part warm in most of your adventures and your trips. And if you're buying that and that's not actually the case, um, then that's not good. (laughs) (laughs) Really, just to summarise. So therefore, if we say, hey, it's a minus five, people would probably – go into buying a minus five bag with a little bit more understanding mm. of the potential of the bag versus if it was stated minus 10. A lot of variables, yeah. So. But go by the Snowy's rating. Even yeah. new bags, we can look at other bags. And this is probably a good segue into the next section for different fields. But yeah. if we get a bag in that it was quite thin, but they say it's a minus 10 bag and we've got other minus 10 bags that people know, we know customers are happy in. Yeah. And they feel much thicker. Yeah. And bulkier than common sense comes into play there and you think, well, I don't, unless there's some magical fabric in there. Correct, <laughs> Or yeah. design, in which case it would cost a lot more, that temperature rating is probably not very accurate. So, yeah. so that's where we adjust our kind of best judgment, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And generally that's, uh, in my personal experience, dealing with customers and customer feedback, it's pretty spot on. Yeah. Yeah. So that goes into fills. Now most of the bags we're talking about in this episode will have some sort of a, um, like a synthetic Nylon polyester yeah, type. Yeah, I, I not, would say more down. for car camping, we're mostly sticking within the realms of yep. synthetic. And reason for that is that it's more cost effective. Yep. Um, it does the job for camping. If you throw down into a, a, a bag just for camping, um, down does last longer, but it requires a little bit more maintenance yeah. to, to maintain that loft. So you got to be a little bit more careful with it, but you're probably buying down for the lightweight packable properties of yep. it rather than um, – if you don't need that lightweight packable property, then you might as well not spend as much and just get a general use bag yeah. with those durable materials that we talked about, plus the durable synthetic liner. And synthetic obviously down, the even the cheapest bag starts at a much, much higher price point. Than much higher. Sort of down. A, I get When I say equivalent, I mean sort of equivalent warmth sort of style bags that you can get just for car camping um, when you're only comparing – the comfort ratings and warmth factor, no other elements, yeah, a couple of hundred dollars more for yeah, a down bag. At least, yeah. yeah. Even just for duck down. There's yeah. duck down in the goose town's more expensive. But yeah. for general camping, you really don't need to invest in that much unless you are a dedicated lightweight camper. Yeah. Um, or you uh camp in, in a sedan, like a small car. I know a lot of our um listeners and and people on um uh Facebook group 
camp out of just a small car. So some of these bulky bags are going to take up a lot of valuable space. And in that instance, the higher investment in a down bag might be worth it. Yeah. But for the most part, you can get the same amount of warmth out of a synthetic fill, but it's bulkier. Yeah. But it's much more cost effective to buy. And the synthetic's basically just layers of, if you pulled it out, it would be, um, I'm sure everyone it sort of looks like a it. cotton it's, ball, doesn't it? But yeah, it's like synthetic. Lots and lots of fibers just kind of knotted together and big sheets of it. And like usually, insulation. Yeah, that's right. Literally. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah. Their, their five degree bag might have one layer of this synthetic. Their zero degree bag, they might add two layers. And their minus five, they add three layers. So yeah. it's as simple as that, really. More insulation, it puffs up more. Once you get in it, the, the, it expands and creates this insulation gap where the warm air gets trapped. The, the warm the air doesn't pass oh, the warmth or um yeah, warmth and cold doesn't pass through as much because it's got a much thicker gap to get through therefore it's warmer, yeah so. and it's interesting that a real common misconception um is that people think that your sleeping bag in and of itself generates warmth but it doesn't it's your body that generates warmth yep. so when you're talking about a sleeping bag and um, how warm it is you're talking about that sleeping bag's ability to insulate your own body warmth mm-hmm. which obviously traps it holds it stores it in there and creates a warm layer of air around you um, it's not because the bag itself is warm or hot no, Sa- right. same with the sleeping bag Yep, that's right. And so that's what I think a lot of people also who who do have a sleeping bag and a sleeping mat and a combination that in theory should keep them warm based on all the factors that we know. Like I'm not talking about my situation where I had a zero degree sleeping bag and a three on a three degree night because that wasn't the sleeping bag's fault. It was my fault for yep. a whole range of different factors. But if – if majority of the variables regarding your gear should have you covered and you're still not sleeping warm, it's probably got a lot to do with how you've managed yourself yep. and your own person and your body leading up to going to sleep and your own core temperature and things like mm-hmm. that, which affect the outcome. Yep. I can't remember. We have done an episode on sleeping warm, I'm sure. I can't remember what We it haven't was. done an episode on sleeping warm, but we did do an episode on how to keep cosy, I think, or how to camp cosy. Yeah. And in that we talked about those variables sort of from about 3 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon in winter or cold weather. That's right. That you can do to make yourself be able to sleep yeah, warmer. putting your thermals on um, early and that sort of thing. So I don't know sleep- what that episode number is, but yeah, we'll no, put it we'll, in the show notes if we'll you haven't it. heard it. So the bag doesn't make you warm, you make the bag warm, but then the bag yeah. keeps that warmth there That's exactly you. right. It's like when you get into bed, I don't know about you, but if my feet are cold, yep. I just like wriggle my feet around and try and sort of like heat heat the bed up a little bit that way. Um, and then, yeah, like 15 minutes later, mm. you're comfy and you're happy. It's because you when you first get into bed, there's literally nothing in that bed generating warmth or heat whatsoever. And then mm. once you're in there, your body generates heat then your doona can start doing its thing. Yeah. On a bigger scale, it's like your house, insulation in your walls, the heat is heating inside, the insulation yeah. stops the heat from escaping. Yeah, exactly right. Yep. And so that's potentially um, – it's, it's probably also worth mentioning quickly to finish off the fuel section. When it comes to – Car camping, sleeping bags and brands, Austrail, Coleman, Austent, Darchi 230, a lot of them have their own fancy technical names or names for the type of fuel that they use, but it's pretty much a much of a muchness. Yeah, they would be different quality for sure. Yeah. They've just taken something that like Coleman, I know, use something called Coal Thum, and it's, yeah. it's a name they've given it. Um and they probably looked at it on a balance of the, well, they would have looked at it on a balance of the price of their product and the performance they want out of the product yep. and and got the best feel for what they want to achieve. Yeah. And every brand goes through and does that. Yeah. And it's, but it, what I'm trying, I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you, if, if you're, if you're looking at a down sleeping bag, for example, or if you're looking at a bag that's a bit more technical, the specifications about the type of insulation that is used is, much more significant in those type of bags than it is for car camping. And so if you're looking at, say, getting a Coleman bag and it has coal therm or if you're looking at getting 
um, a NOS trail bag that has exotherm or such and such. It's that sort of getting to a splitting hairs perspective that it won't is. necessarily make a difference to your overall choice. Especially if it's in the same price range. It's going to be Correct. a different thing but similar performance. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then so talking about that sort of insulation as well, yep. back to where we were before my mini segue, um, what you're sleeping on can mm-hmm. make a difference. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the time if you're needing advice on what sleeping bag to buy um, or, you know, the environment that you're camping in, don't forget to throw in what you're sleeping on. Because mm-hmm. if you're just on a stretcher with no mat, mm-hmm. that can make a massive difference because you have – no insulation between you and the cold air except for your sleeping bag, which isn't probably going to do a huge amount. Not by the time you line it and squash it down. Yep. So in, in that instance, if you think I'll get a really warm sleeping bag in a stretcher um, but no mat or no insulation yeah. properties in the stretcher, yep. you're probably going to sleep colder than if you got a not quite so warm sleeping bag, invest money in a mat and then put that on a stretcher yeah. so that you've got a bit more insulation underneath as well. Yeah. So – Invest in something to sleep on as well as in and yep. make sure you're insulating from underneath. And if you don't have something like a, a you know, decent 10 centimetres thick self-inflating mat that's full of foam because they generally have the highest insulative value that you can get with your sleeping mats, if you don't have something like that, that's okay, but just bear in mind that you will probably have to go for a warmer sleeping bag to offset the lack of insulation in your sleeping mat. Yep. Things like your air mattress, bloody nightmare. Yeah, like cold. you're going to be cold because you're essentially just sleeping on a bubble of cold air. So, um, but you know there are ways around that using woolen blankets and potentially sheepskins or other things you can do to try and offset that. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you are sleeping on will be an, will be a factor that you'll need to consider. Um, Absolutely. But realistically, I think we've sort of covered most of the elements. Um, you don't need to spend the earth. Just, no, just consider all these things. Uh, yeah. And this is just on a simpler level than the technical bags that we went through with uh, with Cedar Summit. Yeah, uh, correct. In episode 11. But, um, it's probably also worth really quickly mentioning that a lot of the bags that we're talking about today, they can't be compressed because if you do try to compress them, you're going to damage those synthetic synthetic fibres, whereas things like mm. down can be compressed. The more car camping style bags, yep. they don't perform as well um, the when synth- they're compressed because then they require a, a loft that doesn't occur necessarily naturally. The synthetic sort of compresses and stays compressed too. It doesn't puff up anymore. Yeah. I've actually got a, another video on how to pack a sleeping bag and for the most part you don't need to roll your synthetic bags, just stuff them in the bag. And it's yeah. usually a godsend because it's hard fitting a rolled bag back into a stuff sack, but you can just stuff it in. And it's actually probably better for the insulation because it kind of creates this irregularity so it puffs up more. So. Yeah. So when you're choosing a sleeping bag, um, basically consider how warm you want it to be, the temperatures in the camping areas that you're going to be going in and what you're going to need to cover. Factor in what you're sleeping on and then the final sort of elements that will help you narrow down your choice is going to be whether or not you want the finish on the – what you want the finish on the bag to be if you want Mm -hmm. more of that canvas style, the aesthetic of it um, and the zip configurations, the hood and the liner. And pack size. Do look at pack size because some of them get pretty big. Some of them do get pretty big, yep. Yep. Absolutely. All on our website, all that information. Cool. Thanks so much for tuning in and listening to this episode of the Snows Camping Show where we talk about sleeping bags. In our new studio. In our new studio. Let us know what you think. Let us us know what you think. What do we we need to add to the shelves at the back here? I've got my Carrie Genie mousetrap back there somewhere. Is it hidden now? I think it's behind where you are. Yeah, it is. It's behind me. Let us know what you want to see on the shelves at the back there. Cool. Catch you later. (laughs) Thanks, guys. See you next time.